Hey guys, I wanted to share a tool with you and uh, I tend to use it in my asset creation pipeline when I'm doing game dev work and uh, I love Marmoset Toolbag 3, I'll tell you what. And uh, <laughs> it uses, I mean, I use it in my projection pipeline when I'm doing uh, normal map projections. Uh, I'm still a little bit resistant in some ways and doing it in other applications. If I mean, if I'm not doing it directly in max uh, after my mesh I'm doing it in Marmoset 3 and uh, without further ado I'm just gonna kinda jump in and set up a little scene and show you why uh, or show you about some of the features and just what I like about it so it's important <clears throat> I already have my files exported so I have my create high poly and my create uh, it's called substance file because it's broken up like how you would for substance it's broken up by name so I'm gonna open both of these and uh, let's go ahead and set up our crate <laughs> our crate projections and so it's really pretty easy uh, and there's but there's a few features that I do want to talk about now when I imported my high poly create uh, some extra stuff came in with it like uh, my max material so this was my I guess inside of max I had a couple of gray standard materials on it uh, a lighter gray for the wood and then a darker gray for the the metal so what I'm gonna and that came inside of Marmoset. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to rename a couple of these material. Or not rename. I'm sorry. Recolor. Uh, da, 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 da. And I'm going to decide on some values for this mesh. Some kind of wood values for this mesh. So, right, we'll say that that's my wood color, right? And then I'm going to go to my dark metal. Oops, sorry. Let's actually finish off. This should be set to roughness. So I'm going to set my roughness map. And then set my metalness map. Metalness of zero. And then for my metal, also going to be roughness, so it's a metalness. So it's going to be one on the metalness. And then I want something pretty low on the roughness to catch a nice little highlight. Those little things, those little nail heads light up. It might be a little. more like that if you had values you could actually uh, PBR values you could drop those in here I'm just kind of eyeballing it at the moment <clears throat> Okay, so with those applied, let's go ahead and create our projections. And so that's just as easy as creating this little, if you click this uh, bread icon up here at the top, <laughs> it's a new baker. And uh, I'm going to name this and call it Crate. And the bake group, we're going to drag our high poly into the high group it already created for us. And then the low poly into that low group. And uh, our our high poly 
has a couple of different pieces. And so I'm going to go to the top of my little bread uh, baker here, this folder, and I'm going to create a, a new bake group. So that bake group will be lid. And then this one down here will be body. So I'm going to take that lid out of that high poly group, that high poly FBX, put the lid high poly under the new group. And I'm going to put the low poly lid under that new group as well. And so this just basically isolated those for me. And this is something I actually really like about Marmoset. And uh, I mean, I kind of wish it could uh, do both methods where you could uh, line it up by name, but I really like being able to kind of drag and drop uh, my high polys into groups. I mean, I don't, uh, I really don't even have to name things and I can just click and highlight uh, if something isn't named and I can just drag, drag and drop them into their own folders so that they don't bake or cross bake onto each other. So it's a nice little feature. I can just almost create as many uh, bake groups as I need uh, and just by drag and drop line up my high polys and low polys. Uh, let's go through kind of how to adjust some of these settings. So if we click on the bread up top, uh, let's just drop down through some of these settings. Uh, like our output, I'm going to say the PSD is going to go to we're doing our crate, so it's going to go to the crate folder, textures, I'm going to create a marmoset textures folder in here, and then I'm going to say crate 2019, and save that there. So that saved, I'm going to set my samples to 16, I'm going to turn my padding uh, you can set to extreme or custom. I like to do custom and just turn it all the way up. Mm, we set our size output. So I'm going to do 2048 for now. And you can add other little outputs for your bake. Uh, and you can do these one by one. Every single one of these that you check, it just kind of adds to the stack, right? Or uh, after you set all that up, you can actually load or save and load some presets, which I've done. So if I go to uh, deploy, sorry, deploy folder, marmoset, and I do my baker sets and I say texture set all, and open that. <clears throat> and that's going to kind of preload all of my maps that I want to bake. So I have a normals, my uh, object normals, position, map, curvature, ambient occlusion, material ID, object ID, wireframe, albedo, roughness. I mean, I just turned everything on just to kind of illustrate the maps that you could get out of Marmoset. And these also have all their settings already saved into them. So if I go look at each one of these, Click the settings, you can change the acronym that comes out on the, the end of it. You can also, if you go to ambient occlusion, I already have my settings already set up for me. You can even do a floor occlusion, which is nice. You can set the ambient occlusion to ignore groups if you want that contact AO. A bunch of settings in there. You can go in and then save out that preset and just load it in every time. Now, the last thing I want to do is go through and highlight my little low poly group. Uh, and when you do highlight that group, it gives you a cage offset. And so I can make sure to, it's another thing I kind of like about this program. Uh, I was pretty amazed to see a third party application support uh, live cage output. I love being able to drag and drop these sliders and see for myself. I tell you what, I, I do not like uh, dropping numbers and guessing if my normal map is going to come out okay um, with the off <laughs> those offset values. 
So I like pushing the cage. I like coming in here and, you know, I can tell it how far I want to push that out, capture my high poly. Uh, go down to the body cage and do the same thing here as well. So that's basically set up. And here's one of the other cool things I kind of like about Marmoset is I can create another group in here. And uh, I'm going to do that. So another bait group. We'll call this barrel. I'm going to go ahead and set up my barrel while I'm here. So let's go to my working folder. Go grab that barrel, exports, grab the high poly and the broken up file. And let's go to our barrel group here, create a new bait group. We're going to name, call this uh, cork for the cork mesh. And we'll call this uh, body or barrel. Let's do body. Okay, so the body high poly goes into the body high poly group, cork high poly goes into the cork high poly group, substance, low poly file, body low poly goes in the low poly slot, cork low poly goes in the low poly slot. That's funny, these are the leftover FBX shells. Um, Technically, I don't need any more, but you could keep these around in case you needed to make changes to. Oops. Keep these around in case you needed to make changes to the mesh and then reload it. This is like a reload kind of node. Go on, go on. All right. So now we got to set up our barrel. Oh, let's make sure that these are on. Mic T space. Boom. Mic tangent space. Great. And then do the same thing for tangent space. Mic T space. Samples 16. Sample 16. Yep, 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 yep. Set our output, barrel, textures, marmoset, open that up, and then we'll set the file name to barrel 2019. Uh, we can check multi-layer PSD. If I do that, it'll actually put all my maps into one uh, one PSD for me, which I would kind of prefer to do that. Files get a little crazy sometimes. Uh, so let's load our preset. Working, deploy, marmoset, set, baker sets, my texture sets. 2048 is good. Multi layer PSD, padding, set to custom, turn it to 128. Boom, 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 boom. Just making sure, making sure, making sure. Yeah, smooth cage. Looks like we're good. Oh, multi layer PSD on the crate, too. And these are both set up now, and I can do them one at a time. So I'm just going to render these real quick. So let's go ahead and hit bake. <clears throat> and I'm going to stay with you. I'm not actually going to pause the video because uh, this is a pretty high res ambient occlusion mesh and uh, look how fast it's going. Uh, it's 2048. I mean, I remember days where I used to have to wait uh, two or three hours for <laughs> an ambient occlusion bake. Awful. Look at this. It's stupid fast. Boom. And that whole asset is done. And uh, what I can do is hit this little button here. I'm on the node of my crate and hit this little P, P circle, circle P, the shader button. 
boom, and it puts all the maps that I baked out. Look at that, loaded all those maps for me. And I can isolate my low poly with this button. Oh, that was, sorry, hide the high poly. And uh, that's my low poly. There's all those maps for me. And then I just click on the barrel and do the same thing. Bake. Because I use the same materials to display in Max when I brought the barrel in here, I mean, it just auto knew to use the right colored materials. And so I didn't even have to reapply those shaders, which was kind of nice. I might not have set my cage for the barrel. Let's hide that high poly. Preview that material. And there's our jump off point. So let's jump over to Photoshop. I want to actually open up those. PSDs and show you what Marmoset kicked out. I think if I import, I'm gonna go ahead and also import a duplicate of the low polys or just the final low poly itself. Import model working. Create. Uh, yep, 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 yep. Uh, Okay, this will be the closed one. Ooh. Let's also import the open. Let's see the inside of this. Barrel. So I was able to do all of this in one file. Another thing I like about it. Let's open these. Barrel. Textures. Let's load that marmoset barrel. And look at that. We have normals, we have our object space normal map, position, curvature, messed up ambient occlusion, because I didn't push the cage out far enough. Probably the normal map too. Yep, normal map too. <laughs> uh, I do like this too though. Look at that albedo broken up for me. I have layers here. Like wood, layers. And with the roughness, it sets up a base roughness for you. Boom. And that was from these shaders that I built inside of these shaders. So when I set these roughness values, they actually bake out for me. So if you have some proper values, you can actually set all of these maps to bake out properly PBR base textures straight out of Marmoset.
Okay. So, I mean, Marmoset, I think, is such a necessary tool for modelers uh, in the game industry these days because, I mean, and, and don't get me wrong, I like Substance. Uh, I texture both pho Photoshop and Substance. Um, but increasingly over over the days and as my as my projects get even more difficult and I'm dealing with more meshes and more maps and um, low polys that I mean it, it just it can get complicated and so for me being able to create a scene inside of Marmoset and I have multiple folders to bake my map so I can you know if I want I can go back in here save this file and I can go back in here and rebake my maps on the fly both my barrel and the crate and then view them in a PBR world in the same file and so I, I just this speeds up my work workflow so much and uh, you know I, uh, I love Marmoset thanks for watching How do I get out of here? Whoa.